We're not live. Hello and welcome to the Ekagen Athletic Stadium in Eskilstuna, Sweden. We're about 120 kilometers west of Stockholm. Uh, we're joined here to watch Perseus Karlström take on the 15 kilometer track national record. Uh, I am Evan Dunphy. I will be hosting today's broadcast. Um, hopefully this all goes off without a hitch. Uh, you can... Follow along with some comments in the stream, and we'll be sure to try to get some questions answered. Percy is just going through his last minute warm-ups here, and uh, we'll be getting underway shortly. It's a nice day in, uh, in Eskilstuna. It is about 20 degrees, sunny, um, you know, maybe a little on the warm side for uh, endurance peak performance, but um, Percy said he's feeling good. He's done a little bit of pre-cooling, uh, which should give him the best chance possible to uh, to attack this record. The, the record he'll be going for today, 58 minutes, 52 seconds, 0.9. Uh, Stefan Johansson set that record en route to what was then a 20,000 meter uh, re world record at the time in 1992 of 118.35. Uh, track races of 15 and 20k aren't routinely done anymore. Um, a little bit more popular in days gone by, but certainly, <laughs> certainly, Percy will be looking for a solid performance here to add to his growing list of national records. He's the national record at 5,000 meters, set last year in Melbourne, Australia, with a time of 18:32. That's about uh, three minutes and 42 seconds per kilometer. Uh, you can imagine going out and doing one of those running, let alone five of those race walking. Uh, he also is the national record holder over 10,000 meters. Uh, his time of 38 minutes and three seconds is one of the fastest times ever done over the distance. Um, off the top of my head, I don't remember exactly what he is all time, but it's... Uh, it's top seven, I think, um, all-time best performances. Only a few seconds off the world record. And he's the national record over 20 kilometers as well, at the time of 118.07. All of those records were set last year in what was a fantastic year for Perseus. We'll talk a little bit more about the year that was uh, for Perseus as we go through this. Here we see Perseus just getting in his last uh, few strides and... We'll be ready to go here shortly. Sweden, of course, uh, took a different path uh, than shutting down, like many other countries did with the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Sweden has stayed fairly open with a few restrictions, and today is actually the first day in Sweden that, uh, that official sports performances are allowed to return. Uh, I know Perseus and his coach, Brent Valance, have been planning a hard 15K effort in the training plan for a while. I believe it was originally scheduled for yesterday, but when the Swedish government announced that uh, Sunday morning would be the first day that they were allowed to do this stuff, uh, they quickly changed the plan to have this race be one that would, uh, would count towards an official record. So we have, we'll have official judges out there. We'll have, you know, everything will be in place, official timing. Uh, anything goes to Dave in terms of record performances, so he'll be he'll be out there looking to get this all official. Here we get a glimpse of uh, Ato Ibanez, Perseus's older brother, uh, older and better looking brother. He's uh, another international race walker. He's uh, also competed at the World Championships, finished in twelfth place at the Doha World Championships. Uh, last fall in what was a pretty grueling race. I was a part of that race as well, the 50-kilometer race walk. Uh, Atto has been around for a long time on the scene, just recently recently stepped away from 
international uh, competition. He's officially retired. He's got a fantastic wife and beautiful child now that take up most of his time. So he's on the camera operating today. I think his uh, uh, Percy's a sister is also out there helping out. So it's a family affair. His mom, Siv as well, is out uh, helping, coaching, no doubt. We're about a minute away here from the official start time. We'll see how closely we stick to that as the the bike mounted camera makes its way around the track. So 15,000 meters on the track. This is 37 and a half laps of the track. So the race will start at the 200 meter start line uh, and finish obviously at the finish line 37 and a half laps later. The race strategy that uh, Percy gave me the before the race here, he's hoping to take the first kilometer out in about three minutes and 55 seconds. From there, he's going to try and hold that pace through to 19 and a half minutes for 5K and 39 minutes through 10K, which will put him under record pace. And then he'll just be trying to give all he can uh, in that last 5K to stay under the record. So if he can hold that 39 minute pace, which is three minutes and 54 seconds per kilometer, That'll put him at a finishing time of around 58.30, which will give him a small buffer on that 58 or 30, uh, 58, 30, 52 record, excuse me. Um, so if all goes to plan, he'll have a small buffer. We see a couple other racers out there uh, towing the line as well. The gun is up. The walkers are on their marks and we are off. So the pace that Perseus will be trying to walk today, that three minutes and 55 seconds or so per kilometer, um, very fast, obviously, but um, well within his capability. Uh, that's That puts him at about a 118, uh, 118 to 118.20 for, for 20 kilometers, and his PB being 118.07 um, certainly indicates that on his best day, he is more than capable of, of attacking this record. Uh, so the question remains if today is his best day or not. He's coming through 200 meters there pretty quick, about 44 seconds. So he's uh, yeah, he's certainly feeling good off to a quick start, and uh, he'll settle in here around, be looking to settle in around 47 seconds per 200 meters, about a minute 34 per, per lap. You'll see him checking his watch fairly often. He'll be taking information regarding his pace uh, and maybe maybe his heart rate, but likely knowing Percy, he'll just be looking at his pace. Uh, I know he's been training very well. He's been doing a lot of uh, mileage and keeping the intensity a little bit lower than he normally would at this point in the season. So he's hoping to see what he can get out of this big, hard effort. Uh, Percy is a beast in training. I've, I've had the, the privilege of training with him uh, several, several times now. And um, no doubt he's one of the, the hardest trainers I've ever ever trained alongside. Um, so no doubt he will have been putting in a hard effort to get ready for this race. We're seeing the bike here struggle to, uh, to keep up even. Uh, but we got, uh, we got Atto here manning the drone. So we'll switch over to this, this view for a second here. see Perseus here coming through up to 600 meters. Still quite you know, a little bit under pace there. 216 through 600 meters is uh, is quite quick. So he'll be looking to settle in and and uh, and find a pace that's a little little comfortable here. As we approach. 800 meters. So 2019 for Perseus was really a breakout uh, breakout year for him. He's been around for a long time, actually. Perseus is probably going back to uh, probably my longest standing competitor. Um, him and I have been competing against each other since 2007, uh, back at the, the World Youth Championships in Ostrava in the Czech Republic. We had a very strong battle for near last place 
uh, where I managed to just edge him out. Um, I think I was something like 24th and he was 25th or something to that extent. Um, and we've yeah been racing each other for the 12 years since then. Um, but 2019 was certainly his, his breakout year. Absolutely crushed it. Won the Race Walking World Challenge, which is uh, a series of races that you accumulate points in throughout the year. He won that quite handily. Um, he set personal bests at pretty much every distance. Uh, just missed him coming through the 1K mark here. Let's get him. I think I was about three. He's about 352 there through uh, through 1K. I think I just missed the split, but uh, but he's moving along quite quite quickly at this point in time. Uh, but that yeah, 2019 uh, personal best over 5K, 10K, 20K. His 10K personal best, the 3803, actually came in the middle of one of his hardest training blocks ever. We were in Saint Moritz preparing for World Championships, and uh, he had the famed uh, Finn camp and meet a uh, uh, big dual meet between Sweden and Finland um, and you know, wanted to go back to Sweden to compete in that and, and earn points for uh, for his teammates and so had had a day off took the train down from St. Moritz to Zurich flew home did this race where he came within came within 10 seconds of breaking the world record and then hopped back on Hop back on a plane and back to St. Moritz for training on Monday. It was uh, it was quite extraordinary. Um, we certainly didn't think he was capable of going that fast when we were taking bets on him back in St. Moritz that morning. But uh, always wanted to prove us prove us wrong. So to anyone here who is new to race walking, which I doubt there's going to be very many of you, but we'll go a quick overview of the rules here. So race walking is defined as a pro progression of steps, wherein one foot is always in contact with the ground. Um, that is judged by the human eye. So we don't use any slow motion technology. We don't use any um, you know, slow motion cameras, stock, anything like that. It's just human, human eye, what they can see. And your advancing leg has to be straight at the knee from the moment of contact until it passes under your body. So you can see Percy there landing with his heel, rolling through to his toes and then pushing off of his toes. Percy is one of the best technicians, if not the best technician uh, in the world. Uh, very much uh, a model for any up and coming race walkers who want to emulate someone with good technique. You don't have to look any further than what you're seeing right here. Normally before, uh, before big competitions, whether it's world championships or big time trials like this, Percy will do a series of physiological testing to see you know, just what his body's doing, what his body says he's capable of doing. So he had a VO2 max test a couple days ago. Uh, while he, wouldn't, he was scant in sharing all of the results uh, of that, he did tell me that went quite well. He was quite happy with it. Um, Pretty much the results show that he can walk at four minutes per kilometer quite comfortably. So you know, the pace he's coming through here should still be feeling really easy at this point in the race where you know, we're not even two kilometers in. He's still got a long way to go uh, and he should be feeling quite easy still at this point in time, which is quite insane because it's a, it's a very quick pace. Sub four minute Ks on the track. Minute 35, a minute 34 per 400 meters. You can see he'll be coming up to 2K here. And we'll get a clock on that. It's 7.46 through two kilometers. So not slowing down another, another kilometer in that 352 range or so. Um, still well under pace. So 
so back to Percy's 2019 season. Um, as I said, he was the, the World Race Walking Challenge winner overall. And that came through winning the European Race Walking Cup in Lithuania early in the year, um, a race that he absolutely dominated. Um, he also he finished fourth at the, uh, the, the La Coruña Challenge race, which was one of the fastest races ever. That's actually where he recorded his, his personal best um, that put him eighth on the, the season list for the, the 20K. He was the eighth fastest time person over 20K last year behind six Japanese athletes and one athlete from, uh, from Italy, Massimo Stano, who also edged out Percy in that La Coruña race. Um, the Japanese have been always a factor at the top of those top lists, but really in the last couple of years, they've translated those top list fast times to medal performances. And uh, at the World Championships in Doha in October, Percy managed to uh, to find himself on the podium, finished in third place behind the victor um, Yaminishi of Japan, who dominated the race start to finish. Um, you know, never looked in doubt, just was clear as day the, the best athlete on the field there. But Percy was a close second. Um, that bronze medal obviously coming behind a Russian athlete. Um, so we can ostensibly ignore that result. Um, Percy gave a valiant effort in that race, chasing down, chasing down Yamanishi, uh, but just couldn't quite hold on and, and had the Russian come and overtake him with a kilometer to go and managed to hold on till, uh, till the end for that bronze medal, which was quite a race. I was there watching. Uh, it was a lot of fun, a lot of tears of joy, and a lot of angry swearing and cheering as well. We can see as well Percy taking on uh, fluids. His, his mom there, Siv, is handing out bottles every couple of laps to him. He'll take on as much as he can, can tolerate. Uh, 15K, you know, competing for just under an hour. His fluids won't be the, uh, the most important thing. Uh, he won't be in jeopardy of, of running out of carbohydrates, really, in, this, in a race of this length, but certainly will want to stay hydrated and, and keep his body um, as cool as he can. Coming up to 2,800 meters there. As we come around and cross the finish line on this lap, it will be one-fifth of the way through the race. It'll be 20% done. And we'll get that 3K split. And I mentioned that Perseus' brother, um, Ato Abanez, he's also a race walker. Their other brother, Ramo, um, a race walker as well. And it obviously runs in the family as their mom, Siv, was a world champion in 1981. Uh, she won the World Cup over 5K in Valencia in 1981. There we go, about a 356 kilometer there for Percy through 3K. Uh, came in at about 11.44 or so, so still right on that pace, a little bit under the pace he, he had planned on being, and settling in nicely now. And I've also seen recently that uh, Percy's had his sister out training with him. I'm not sure how much race walking she's done in the last in the last 15 years, but um, Percy was pulling her around for for a few strides the other day. So, you know, it's it definitely is a, a family affair for the Karlstrom Ibanez household. So Percy had a few questions he had asked people to ask her, or he had taken a few questions from people on Instagram in the couple of days leading up to this race. Um, one of the questions he got was around his nickname, Suco Loco. Um, it means, it translates from Spanish to crazy Swede. Percy spends a lot of time in Mexico training um, with, the, with the, the Mexican athletes and, and 
some time in Spain as well, training with the Spanish athletes, and uh, speaks Spanish fluently is one of his several languages he speaks. Um, Crazy Swede is a very appropriate nickname for uh, for Perseus and one he embraces wholeheartedly. Um, crazy in training, out of training, in his day-to-day -day life. Um, he really works to embody that uh, that nickname to its fullest. Uh, never really seen anyone train quite like Perseus when it comes to those high-intensity, hard rep sessions. Uh, he actually owes... You know, owes a lot of his ability to dig deep in races and and really push those last couple of kilometers to how he approaches his training, especially in those last few reps of uh, you know those long ten by one k, six by two k training sessions. Really trying to build up and and push hard in those last couple couple of reps. I've been on the receiving end of a few insane kickdowns from from Percy in the past and. It's pretty insane to see when he ramps the pace up just how fast he's capable of going. So as we approach the 15 minute mark here, we're, we're coming up to the quarter way mark of this race. We'll be approaching uh, 3,800 meters, I guess that will be. To give an example of Percy's uh, ability to dig deep back to back to back, uh, one of the one of the races that, that we race walkers tend to love doing is the Around Taihu uh, Tour at the end of the year in, in uh, Taihu in China. It used to be a four-day race, now a three-day race. Uh, different distances you usually start now. It starts with a 20K and then uh, a couple of 10Ks back to back the next couple of days and in the last couple of years percy has become a dominant force in in those races um i believe this year or in 2019 excuse me he might have won all three days um if i remember correctly i was several minutes behind every day so i never actually saw the the finish of any of those days but um you know, certainly his ability to back up day after day is impressive and while I was yammering away, I actually missed that split through 4K. Yeah, so if anyone happened to see what he went through 4K and want to pop that in the comments. But well under uh, four minute pace here still. So chipping away at those 355s. So Percy has really come into his own in the last. Oh, thank you, Ruslands. We've got uh, we've got Percy coming through 4K in 1540. So again, right, perfectly smack dab on pace there uh, at 355. So sticking to his plan, just as he said he was going to, which is no surprise to anyone. Um, and we'll we'll get the first real crucial split at 5K. Um, which will tell us a lot as we enter that second third of the race, that five to 10K will certainly tell us if this record is on uh, today or not. Um, but while 2019 was a breakout season for, for Perseus, he's, uh, he's been one to flounder, I'll say, at, at major championships in the past. Um, you know, his, his championship record in the last couple of years, never really matched up to uh, to what his training and, and, and some of his other races said he was capable of doing. 
He was uh, a, a DNF at the World Championship in 2015. He was a uh, DNF at the Olympics in 2016, uh, as well as in the 50K at the World Cup in 2016. And in 2017, he finished 37th at the World Championship in London. Um, really, since 2017, he's been able to turn it around. 2018, he finished uh, eighth at the World Team Championships in the 50K, uh, a race that was very fun for me until it wasn't fun anymore. And I think Percy would describe the race the exact same way. Him and I were sitting in the lead pack with, a, with uh, three of the Japanese athletes with a quite a big lead on uh, the next the next pack. And at 35k, we were kind of looking at each other like, this is great. We're doing awesome. We're going to we're going to win medals here. Uh, and then for me, it was about 3k later that uh, I completely blew up and questioned whether or not I was even going to finish the race. And I think unfortunately, Percy blew up a couple k after me and, and managed to slog it home. Uh, a little bit ahead of me, but I would have liked if we had blown up at the same point, because then we could have at least shared in each other's company, which would have been nice. All right, we're coming up here to 5K. thirteen thirty-seven. So a little, little bit of slowing down here. That, uh, that was a 357 kilometer there. So whether or not that's fatigue setting in or um, a lapse of, of judgment or getting a little bit distracted. Uh, we'll see if he can get that target back on. He's still right on pace for, for the record, uh, a little bit off what he had intended on going through 5K in, but uh, five or six seconds, seven seconds, that's nothing that can't be made up if he's still feeling good. So we will see over the next couple of kilometers whether that was an anomaly or if uh, if fatigue is starting to set in here. So Perseus is racing in the new feel shoes, which are something that a lot of people watching today probably recognize. New feel have really exploded on the race walking market with a race walking specific shoe. And, uh, and you, you know, standing on any start line now at a, at a race walking race, you're, you're bound to see a, a sea of, of new feel shoes and uh, Percy's been been wearing them for the last year or so and and uh, really quite a big fan he's very finicky with his with his feet um, he likes to cut holes in shoes and and do all sorts of manual manipulations with his shoes out of sheer insanity I'd say but um, but it seems to work for him um, You can see as he goes through, he's pouring some water on himself. He's staying cool. Temperature still seems to be hovering around 20 degrees in Sweden. So, you know, getting warm shouldn't be too warm to really be, uh, be holding the back too much, but want to stay as cool as possible when you have the opportunity. So when the opportunity presents itself, you take it, which is a lesson that sounds like it should be, um, pretty self-evident, but having raced and watched the races in Doha, um, that lesson is maybe harder learned by other athletes than some. And Perseus is definitely an athlete who embraces sports science. He's, he's probably more in tune with the latest research in sports science than most um, exercise physiologists are. Uh, I've, I've never seen a non-academic chow down on academic studies quite as much as Perseus does, um, which has made him a fan favorite of, uh, of Louise Burke, who many of you will know is the Australian Institute of Sport, sports nutritionist extraordinaire and all around amazing human being, um, runner of the supernova training camps that, uh, that take place each year in, in Australia, normally in Canberra, this year due to the wildfires taking place in took place in Melbourne, um, and, and Louise leads a team of absolutely sensational human beings slash um, exercise physiologists, dietitians, researchers. Um, just yeah, it's it's quite quite amazing and remarkable what what they do. And and Perseus is an athlete who embraces 
that head first. He's always the first to sign up to be part of some sort of terrifying diet intervention that's likely going to kill him. Um, he's endeavored to try high fat as much as any human has ever tried high fat to, uh, to that extent. And um, despite knowing the research and knowing that it most likely is not going to aid his performance, he's always game to give it a try. We saw another bit of a slowdown there. Just just under four minutes for that last K. So pace might be a little bit hot for Perseus right now. We'll see if he can get it back on track. As we're through, what is that? Through uh, six kilometers, excuse me. get distracted by my own notes here. Um, what else is there to talk about? This is harder than I thought it was going to be. thought I'd just be able to yammer on for an hour, no problem talking about Percy. But uh, he's a man of mystery, this man. He uh, he loves race walking. He's, he explicitly told me in, his, in, in the notes he sent me um, uh, beforehand, um, underlined, bolded, and circled that he is single. So any uh, any female fanciers out there, go for it. That's that's all I have to say. He's very shy. He won't make the first move. So you know this is this is my proclamation that the ball is in your court um, while you try to court Percy. Uh, his Instagram is full of very salacious photos. So anyone who doesn't follow Perseus on photo on, on Instagram and is looking for some borderline not safe for work content, um, check out his Instagram. I'm not sure if it shows up if you have your safe search turned on on your computer, but there's only one way to find out. He's a man not ashamed of himself, that is for sure. And he wears that on his sleeve both on and off the field of play in the best sense of the word. So he seems to have made up a few seconds here as he goes through 6.6 .6 kilometers. Let's see if he's getting back on track. Might have just been a, a slump of a kilometer. We'll, we'll get a better sense as he comes around the next lap to see what he hits that 7K mark in. And then after that, we'll have the 7.5K sort of check-in halfway to see how that pace is coming along. So with, uh, with the COVID lockdowns across the world, this is Percy's probably the longest time he spent at home in years. He's a man that likes to travel, typically spends several months of the year down in Mexico City, training with, uh, with his Mexican friends and teammates, um, spends a few months of the year in Australia, roaming about, staying with... Uh, with the amazing race walking community down in Australia, bumming off of uh, off of the likes of Tim Erickson, who has graciously provided Percy a home on many occasions. Here we go, 3.58 through that kilometer. So claw back a couple of seconds, but still falling off the pace a little bit here. But we'll get a good sense as we come through 5K, how he's looking, or sorry, uh, through 7.5K, how he's looking and if that record is still in jeopardy. He still looks good. You wouldn't be able to tell that he's struggling from uh, from his body language at all. 
he's a man that tends to wear his heart on his sleeve. You can you can pretty much tell uh, when he's suffering, especially if there's sound. You can you can hear when he's suffering. Um, he is. We just got his camera on there to see if we can hear a little bit from him. You can see he's working pretty hard now. You can hear that heavy breathing. As he approaches halfway, let's see here. We got twenty-nine thirty, twenty-nine thirty-one, twenty-nine thirty-two, twenty-nine thirty-five through halfway. So he's on pace for uh, quick math. That's what fifty-nine ten. He's fallen off pace a little bit. He's got to claw that back. He's about 20 seconds over pace right now. So he's going to need a big kick down here in the second half. I see him lapping a couple of the other competitors who are out today. I know that Percy was very nervous this morning as uh, he is he is not one to shy away from calling his shots. He uh, he put it out there back in February that he was going after the world record in the 20k event. He is he was racing in, uh, in a race in Japan and yeah, had made no bones about it. He said I'm going after the world record and and put everyone on notice and gave it a good crack for a few k, but uh, wasn't meant to be on the day and and he, he, he quote unquote struggled and, and came away with only a 79 and a half minute 20k which is uh, still considerably faster than uh, than I've ever gone um, and, and still one of the fastest times in the world this year um, but he certainly believes that he can uh, he can be the best in the world and, and doesn't shy away from from making bold claims when he thinks uh, when he thinks they're on the cards, so you gotta admire that, and he and he takes his takes his losses in stride. He's never one to make uh, too many excuses. Oh, I missed that split as well, but a three fifty eight there as well. So still on that three fifty seven, three fifty eight kilometer split range. That's getting him further and further away from the record at this pace. But he's over the halfway part. He's, it's all downhill from here. Seven k to go. Let's see if he can if he can uh, muster something up over these next twenty seven minutes or so. So last year, Perseus's five and ten k performances ranked were the fastest times in the world for those distances. His, uh, as I said earlier, his twenty k was was the eighth fastest time, or the eight made him the eighth fastest person um, in the world last year. And this year, he's already, uh, although twenty twenty was shut down for for many of us, he still had a slew of of races, um, including. Excuse me, including a um, what am I trying to say? A uh, a, a thirty a sub thirty nine minute ten k back in January. 
uh, as well as a sub 120 20k back in february as well so he was definitely in shape when all these lockdowns started and uh has done well to stay in shape he was in sweet he was in australia until middle of february i think it was and and then had to get out uh and get back home um you know he would have loved to have stayed but uh them's the breaks trying to think of other fun stories so percy himself is uh is quite a well percy and atto are quite the film filmographers film enthusiasts uh they delighted us at the 2014 world race walking cup by taking over the uh, surround sound and stage of the uh, of the after party and displaying a very odd but very on brand video which i think is still on perseus's youtube's uh channel that you're on now so um certainly go and give his other videos a look after you're done with this race they will not disappoint on giving a valuable if not frightening look into the mind of this human being One of the other questions that Percy was asked in his uh, Instagram questions he had posed before the race was whether or not he's ever taken a date on a walk. Most of Percy's questions related to his Instagram questions all seem to be around dating, which um, is probably not surprising. Um, but Percy said he would absolutely under no circumstances take a date on a race walk. Um, so... If you are out there trying to court Percy, do not suggest going on a training session. Um, while he is very lovable and loving, his his ego will not allow him to to uh, be beaten in a training session, even if it's a date. Um, so just to, just be careful of that. Opt for a nice, slow, casual, leisurely walk on the beach. Uh, don't ask him over to the track for some 1K reps. So we're over 9k in now. The next split will be the 10k split. We'll have a really good sense of what he needs to close the last 5k in, obviously, at that point. Um, and we'll take it from there. But Perseus did want to give a shout out to uh, Brendan Reading, who, let's be honest, probably is not watching, but um, very good friend of ours, um, who got married in January with uh, with us in in uh, in attendance. And um, Perseus uses uses Brendan and Ellie's loving relationship as motivation uh, because I know one of their first ever dates was a casual casual stroll. Um, and so I know that's something that Percy looks up to because uh, we all want to emulate Brendan and Nelly and it worked for them. So I think that's that's Percy's logic there. Uh, Maggio asking for the 5K split. Uh, I had it at 1937 Maggio. Um, and we'll get the 10K split forthcoming as well.
You can see Atto in the background as Percy comes around um, every lap there. Clearly hasn't been out uh, enjoying the sunshine in Sweden as he's about as pale as they come, it seems. Um, can't, same cannot be said about Percy, who is rocking quite the tan, which is easier to do when you spend 10 months of your year in summer, as, as Percy tends to do. All right, we should be 200 meters away here from the 10 kilometer split. I gotta pay attention because I've missed all the last couple splits by yammering on, so make sure I'm in the right place to do the thing I need to do. So remember, Percy's plan was to come through 10K in 39 minutes, which we've just ticked over, so you know, it's. He's about 100 meters, just over 100 meters behind his uh, his intended goal. So we'll see what he comes through here in. Looks like it'll be around 39.30. Yeah, 39.32 through 10K here, so slowing down quite a bit that last 5k was in 1957 nope 1955 sorry um, so it's going to take a big pickup here to hit that mark of 58 52 which he's aiming for he'll need to close in 1920 That was a question. I, I'm, I'm not confident enough in my math on the fly, but I believe he has to close in 1920 in order to still get the record. That record again held by Stefan Johansson. 58-52.9 uh, en route to his 118.35 20,000-meter um, then-world record um, now Swedish record set in 1992. We got Ridian Cowley checking in from Australia, training partner of, uh, of Perseus's under the guidance of Brent Valance, um, one of race walking's most illustrious coaches, coach Jared talent to several Olympic medals, four Olympic medals. Got a couple world championship medals to boot and uh, was, you know, incredibly helpful to myself as well. Take deserves more than a handful of credit for, um, for my race last year at the world championships and credit as you know, all the credit to, uh, to Perseus's bronze medal as well. Um, Percy probably gets some of that credit, but um, I'm willing to give most of it to Brent, to be honest. Who one can only assume that Brent is watching and would be much better suited for this live stream to be filling your mind with stats and and information that I can only dream of having at my, dis at my disposal, but um, I'm not very smart, so that's, that's why. Now we have Atto taking over the picture uh, not entirely sure what's going on there okay we're back to Percy okay uh, to run alongside there giving some advice it looks like There you can hear Percy's breathing quite heavy now. Um, so he looks to still be on just about four minute pace per kilometer. So we'll get a sense here as he comes up to 11K, what he needs to kick down his last 4K in. But he is right now a little bit off of 
record pace. Looking like he'll be somewhere in the range of 59, 20 or so. Um, about 30 seconds off, off the pace at this point in time. But um, I would not put it past Percy to be able to close in a 340 last kilometer and, and make up that time. So uh, I'm not counting him out just yet. No cheering for you. Four K to go. He's got to go fifteen twenty to get the record. Fifteen twenty. So he's got to go three. Come in, So if he can get his next 3K down to about 353s and then close in a big 340, um, that would be enough. But uh, looks like it's going to be a bit difficult at this point. But uh, again, if I'm if I'm betting on anyone to come from behind with a K to go, it would be it would be Percy. See that's you can get a sense from uh, from Percy's breathing here why he gained another nickname. He's a, he's a man of nicknames. This man, um, Percy Carlstrom, because even Percy's not his not his real name. Um, but Mr. Big Lungs, Mr. Big Lungs became my personal favorite nickname for him this January, and uh, he's showing the full force of why that is here today. My Swedish is a bit rusty, but I believe they're they're telling him to, to pick it up, to, to go faster. Uh, that's what I imagine they're saying. Ah, yes, Alana McKay's uh, nickname for Perseus, which is another all-time great um, princess. It's, it's, it's quite windy. We can hear Atto there. Uh, Relaying that it's quite windy out. Wind is never your friend on a track like uh, open track like this. And uh, going at this by yourself, you got no one pacing and no one cutting wind for you. That's going to make it doubly as tough. So three twelve there through eight hundred meters on this K. So just four minute pace still. Comes up to 12k, he'll have 3k to go. Three fifty eight for that kilometer, forty seven twenty nine through twelve K. Thirty seconds under. Still needs to make up another. 40 seconds. He needs to go 11.20 on his last 3K. It's 3.47 pace. You can 
really hear how hard he's working now. These are the kind of efforts that redefine why it is that he's one of the best in the world. Uh, he's clearly been struggling for the last several kilometers. Um, and he continues to push through, continues to walk at a pace that is world class by, by even the highest standards. Still knocking out sub four minute kilometers. Uh, There's only only a handful of race walkers in the world that could uh, that could match Percy step for step on any given day, and he's showing exactly why that is right here. Surprisingly, Percy's gone for the no hat option today. Typically, he's on a day like today. I'd, I'd expect to see him out rocking, rocking the hat, but uh, no, just gone. He wants to. I'm sure there's gel in that hair. I'm sure he's he's um, spent time this morning making sure that hair looked absolutely perfect, uh, and I'm sure not a not a strand of it would have budged during this 15k effort. We're just over the 50 minute mark here. So we got less than 10 minutes to go now. Less than two and a half K from the finish line. When he hits the other side of the track, he'll be at 13 K with two K to go. And that's when he'll really start to know the finish line is close five laps. He'll start kicking down as much as he possibly can and see just how fast he can go. So right now, Percy's probably walking at a cadence of close to 200 steps a minute. For Percy, he's got quite a long stride, um, so he's probably taking about 198 to 200 strides a minute, I would, uh, I would reckon to guess. Um, Perseus tends to have probably one of the longest strides uh, on the uh, in the field. Another three fifty nine kilometer there, so he's still chugging away. Sub four minute K is clearly hurting, clearly suffering, but able to keep that pace at a pretty remarkable level. That record seems to have just slipped a little too far away here. It would take take something pretty miraculous over the next 2k to get it but he's still going to come away with a very solid time we'll see just how fast he can go over his last 2k and what he can kick down i have no doubt that his last kilometer will be the fastest kilometer of the race it's just a record it's a matter of how fast he he can go So when he comes around with four laps to go, that'll be one mile. And we'll be looking to cover that mile in just over six minutes, probably somewhere in this. I reckon he'll probably be looking to cover it in about six minutes and uh, 10 seconds, six minutes and 15 seconds, if there's any mile-oriented people out there. Uh, he's been chugging away at about a six minute and 24 second pace per, per mile. Um, and I, I have no doubt that that last mile will be kicked down. So um, let's see what we can do. Four laps to go now. Uh. 
And now the metric mile, 1,500 meters to go. You can see here from, from the splits that I managed to take throughout this race, we started off a bit under pace, 353s and then a 357, 353, and then he started to slow a little bit. I failed at my job of getting lap splits, so we have a 3K in there. Fifty four and a half minutes in here. Five more minutes to go. Three laps to go. Come on. Ellie's really working hard now. Coming up with 1K to go, two and a half laps. Empty the tank, leave it all out there. Four oh two, so that was his slowest kilometer of the race. 55.30. Expected finishing time here will be somewhere around 59.20 or so. Remember the record he was chasing, 58.52.9. Stefan Johansson, 1992 in, in Bergen. A uh, little bit out of reach now, but um, still anything under an hour for 15K is, is quite a remark, is quite a world-class time, and do it by yourself on a Warmer, windy day, nothing to be ashamed about. So he's covered that 200 meters here in about 46 seconds. So he's already picking it up. He's got two laps to go. ridian has got him pegged to the 320 last K. I, 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 nothing would surprise me from this man, to be honest. But uh, here we go. 600 meters to go. One thirty three that last lap. One thirty three puts them puts them at about a three fifty two and a half last uh, last kilometer here. I'm sure he'll go under three minutes and fifty seconds for his last K as he kicks down his last last five hundred meters. Five hundred meters to go now. Four hundred meters to go now. Bell lap is at fifty-eight minutes now. Oh, 
200 meters to go, 306 through that last 800 meters. This last K is going to be sub 350, I suspect. There goes the record there. So no national record today for Perseus, but he'll still come through with a very solid time as he comes into the final straight. 100 meters to go now. Crowd is cheering him on. That's you guys, by the way. You're the crowd. Just make that clear. 59-17, so 59-18, 59-20, 21. And you can see what it did to him. You can see how much that's hurting him. Fantastic effort. Might have to ask him about that number choice if it was uh, if it was anything to do with uh, some of those Instagram questions he was getting. It was. <laughs> but uh, as you can see, not a speck of hair has been displaced on that head of his. Fifty nine twenty two, a fantastic effort. <laughs> He picks himself up the, off the ground. You can see those uh, those watermarks he leaves behind on the track. An indelible impression left along, across this track that I'm sure uh, I'm sure he's left a lot of blood, sweat, and tears on this track in his lifetime. And he can add another 59 minutes and 22 seconds of that here today. <laughs> That last kilometer got at 351, just over 350. A big kick down after his 14th kilometer was his slowest of the race. He came back and and closed his last kilometer as his fastest of the race. Shows that ability to dig deep and uh, you know, really push, even though he knew the record was out of touch, knew that it wasn't going to be you know, his day that way. He still uh, still gave it everything he had all the way to the finish line. And uh, yeah, that's just the kind of person Percy is. You can see he's he's really fighting the urge there to uh, to take his shirt off. I, I know this is hard for him being so fully clothed. Do you hear him? Yep, we got audio. How was that, Percy? How do you feel? Congratulations. That was a that was a solid effort. Fifty nine twenty two. Wow, so hard. It was I was really, really windy on the home straight. And I really had to fight on every lap. Oh, it was uh, quite hot as well. First days of summer. I haven't really got used to the heat yet. Yeah, it, look, it looked like it was a warm out there. Um, so early on the race, first couple k, you went, you were, you were, you were a little bit under pace. You'd said you wanted to go out in three fifty five. You were, you know, three fifty threes or so the first couple k. What was going through your mind in those first uh, first couple kilometers? Well, I was, I was surprised, really surprised that he was back. Uh, so then I, obviously, I slowed down a bit, and then. Yeah, it was kind of rolling along quite quite good in the beginning, and then 
really hitting the wind in the home straight. Getting tough and kind of setting in the 357s, 358s. And then had our first dip off there. 5k going through like eight minutes for the same the next 2k. And try to come up together a bit. Sped up. And then just, uh, really, really had to dig deep uh, the last 4k. Yeah, yeah. You only had I had you at uh, yeah your your fourteenth k. Really, sort of you know lost it a little bit four oh I four oh two four oh three ish, uh, and then really pulled it back that last k. So what was going through your mind? Fourteen k. You knew the record was was uh, was out of touch for the day, but you still kicked it down. Still recorded your fastest fastest k of the race that last k. What was what drove you to that? Okay, last lap. There's always, there's always a big kick if you just want to in the end. So you just try to, to get that really, really good push to last 400 meters uh, to have a solid finish. So to, to set the time. That's yeah. good. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a solid time. Uh, quite happy. Uh, training is going well. So. Yeah, what do you, what do you think uh, what do you think Coach Brent will have to say about this? Uh, I think he's uh, very pleased, uh, and I think he is a little bit surprised and, and happy uh, because we haven't really been been doing any high quality stuff, more like mileage and just a, a few few uh, short and faster kilometers and nothing very slow, but nothing like. Uh, so yeah, I think it's really satisfied. It's well, awesome. And how how do you so going forward? How do you cool down? How do you what do you do in the next hour, couple of hours? And then what does training look like uh, moving forward? Um, probably walk a couple of laps here, and then uh, I'm going home, and we'll celebrate my 97 year old grandma with uh, some cake. So good uh, replenish of carbohydrates. And protein and fat, uh, and then I'll just probably take an easy afternoon, uh, maybe jump in the pool or something, or have a very easy like stroll or a couple of kilometers in the afternoon. Like a bike ride. Uh, yeah, maybe a, a bike ride with my brother, like 100 kilometers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, going, going forward, uh, this was the last day of my a training block, so I have no idea what my coach had in mind at the moment. So we'll see about uh, the future have in mind. Nice, and I, I think the question everyone's asking, given that race walking is a is a family affair, uh, 97-year-old grandmother, is she, uh, she a race walker as well? Uh, no, she, I, I don't think she uh, ever took uh, a step in her whole life. And she's always, uh, she's always saying, what? I'm going to do 50 kilometers again. That's so stupid. I'm so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and then if I go and have a bad day, such a long travel to such a poor result. <laughs> 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 so she's, she's a pragmatic woman, it sounds like. <laughs> so what is that? She's a very pragmatic woman. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, congratulations, Percy. That was an awesome effort. I know everyone watching at home enjoyed seeing you and, and, and really... <laughs> Really could hear how much you were working there. So, um, yeah, really appreciate it. And enjoy your cool down. Enjoy your cake. Happy birthday to your grandmother. And uh, we look forward to, to following you around for the rest of the year. Cool. Thanks, everyone. See ya. Cheers. And while Percy goes and uh, cools down from, from this, this will uh, be as good a time as any, I guess, to say thank you. And I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Um, this was definitely a learning experience for, for all of us involved putting this together. We had a lot of fun doing it, so hopefully you enjoyed watching it. And uh, yeah, we'll tune out here from uh, Eskils Tuna uh, and from my couch in Richmond, British Columbia. I've been Evan Dunphy. You've been watching Perseus Carlstrom. Thanks for, uh, thanks for tuning in.